Hey guys, and welcome back to How to Make Elements from Household Materials. And today's element is going to be bromine. Now, a long, long time ago, I actually did make bromine, but that was a really long time ago, and the video, to be honest, was not very good. So we're going to be reattempting it today, and we'll be using pretty much the same method. Some slightly different variations, but I doubt any of you actually saw my old video. That was back when I had less than 100 subscribers. Anyhow, nonetheless, what we have right here is some concentrated hydrochloric acid. We have about just under 200 milliliters of that, and that can be purchased at places such as Canadian Tire as muriatic acid. And it's about 10 molar, so it's quite concentrated. We also have some black manganese dioxide here. Uh, manganese dioxide can easily be obtained from old batteries and stuff, and you'll have no issue obtaining that impurity in this reaction isn't going to matter. Because we're going to be reacting the manganese dioxide with the hydrochloric acid produced chlorine gas, which is very toxic. So extreme caution must be used, and you should have a gas mask on hand. It also must be done outside. And yeah, we just have 200 mils of water right here, and about... Uh, 70 grams or so of this potassium bromide. Now potassium bromide can actually be purchased from lots of different pool chemical stores and stuff. You can actually find it at Canadian Tire. It's not pure potassium bromide, but it does contain a decent amount of potassium or sodium bromide, depending on the brand that you buy. And any sodium or potassium bromide salt will work very well for this reaction. Uh, likely any bromine compound will work, not 100% guaranteed, but the chlorine that we produce should displace the bromine from whatever compound it is in. And this is because chlorine is of course a stronger oxidizing agent than bromine, and oxidizes the bromide ions directly into bromine, which is the elemental bromine, which we can separate out. So now that we have all of this prepared, we'll go outside, I have some apparatus set up, and I'll load everything into the various parts of the apparatus. Uh, first we are going to, however, dissolve all of our potassium bromide into the water. So we'll just add all that in, I'll scrape all that out, but we'll just get a good mixed solution so that it's nice and dissolved. And yeah, I'll do all that, and then I'll meet you outside. Okay, so we have all of our apparatus set up here, as you can clearly see. It is rather complicated, but not, not too bad. Um, you can see here we have a gas generator with a addition funnel on top. And it's totally sealed and everything, and there's our hydrochloric acid in there. We've loaded the manganese dioxide in the bottom, and a hose has been attached all the way up, which runs into the top of our apparatus, right up there. It's then attached to a glass tube, which goes all the way down into our solution, um, and it bubbles through our solution of potassium bromide, which is of course in this 500 milliliter round bottom flask. Now this heating mantle we actually made in a previous video, and you could go see how to make that. So we'll be using that to eventually distill our bromine. But initially, as we generate the chlorine gas and bubble it through the potassium bromide solution, we won't be heating it at all. But we also have this uh, reflux condenser and everything here. Or not reflux, sorry. Um, condenser here so if any bromine does come over it'll condense and we'll collect it over in a receiving flask over there and eventually we will of course begin to heat our round bottom flask once the addition of chlorine gas is done and then we'll be able to still over all the bromine so of course we have cold water uh, condensing set up there and I'll be putting an ice bath underneath the receiving flask here uh, so that we don't have any bromine escaping any bromine or chlorine that does manage to make it over is caught in that funnel trap over there um, which will destroy any toxic vapors. So that's pretty much the setup. So we'll begin by slowly dripping the hydrochloric acid onto the manganese dioxide. This will of course generate chlorine gas which will oxidize the potassium bromide while well, the bromide ions in solution to bromine. And we should see a red color start to form in our solution. So we'll start turning that on then I'll meet you back. Okay, so as I kind of suspected, the addition directly to the manganese dioxide isn't producing a whole lot of chlorine gas. There is evident bubbling, but it's not very fast. So I've turned on the heat, and we'll slowly heat this. This is why I had it set up on my hot plate, so we could do that, and hopefully that'll kickstart the reaction. I also didn't describe this before, but you can see that balloon up there at the top. That's just on top of our addition funnel rather than a stopper, so that if for some reason a huge amount of chlorine gas is suddenly generated, the balloon will expand instead of having our glassware explode. Um, because the end of this glass tube which bubbles it through is actually a pretty tiny opening. It's not a big opening, so we do want to be careful. Anyhow, we'll let this continue to run and I'll continue to heat this up and hopefully get some chlorine gas generation. Okay, so I currently have the gas mask on, which you can clearly <laughs> tell by the odd sound of my voice, but it's protecting me from breathing in deadly chlorine gas vapors, any of which might be escaping or trapped. This year trap is actually changing color slowly, but um, I was definitely detecting some chlorine gas odor, so I decided to put on a gas mask. We've added all of our hydrochloric acid, however the reaction is still proceeding, 
and we're still generating plenty of chlorine gas which is being bubbled through our solution here. And we're still generating bromine. And as you can see, the solution is very, very black, and there's actually bromine which has begun to condense on the side of the walls. I just turned the heating mantle on very low to a 3, and we will need to ramp it up a bit higher, but we'll just start to warm up the mixture so that eventually we can get it hopefully distilling all the way over. Bromine does boil at a fairly low point of about 58 degrees Celsius, so we should have no issue distilling it over and keeping all the water behind. Of course, we're going to have to clean up our bromine a bit and whatnot, but that shouldn't be too difficult to do. So we'll just continue with this addition um, while well, the bubbling through the bromine solution and distill the bromine over. And until, we'll continue to do this until no more bromine is seen in the reaction flask here. At that point we'll take a bromine product which is over there and purify it. Of course I'm going to get a nice bath ready in just a moment so that our bromine isn't constantly vaporizing after it's distilled over. But we'll get all that done. Then I'll meet you back. So I'll meet you guys back in a few minutes. Okay, so once it looked like all the bromine more or less had our potassium bromide more or less reacted, the chlorine gas generator was dismantled. Well, not dismantled, but just taken apart from that. And the chlorine gas generator also stopped producing chlorine gas. And so a piece of aluminum foil was placed around the apparatus, and the place where the tube went in before was replaced with the stopper. The temperature was then ramped up on our heating mantle here. As you can clearly see, we are now distilling bromine, you can see that beautiful red vapor front. As we're collecting some beautiful crimson drops of bromine down there at the bottom. A bit of water got sucked in backwards through the funnel trap, um, but that's okay, because we're going to need to clean up the bromine in the end anyhow. But we'll let everything distill over till no more bromine comes over, and then I'll show you how we're going to clean it up. Okay, so now that we've finally finished the distillation, um, we were able to transfer all the stuff in the receiving flask into a separatory funnel and separate off our just over 10 milliliters of bromine here. So it still contains some water, so we're going to be using this sulfuric acid to clean it. Now this drain cleaner, well it looks impure, it's actually just painted here, and it's actually a very, very clear solution. Well it is only 93% sulfuric acid, this will actually work just perfectly for this case. However, if you have more dirty sulfuric acid, you might want to consider distilling it first. Anyhow, we're going to add that back into the separatory funnel, add about probably 20 mils of sulfuric acid on top, and shake it around uh, with frequent venting so we can hopefully pull out any remaining water. Okay, so after separating it out of the separatory funnel, you can see the sulfuric acid layer on top and a nice clear, well not clear, but very pure bromine product. See, it's absolutely gorgeous, a beautiful color of bromine. Anyhow, I have prepared an ampule here, which is currently in these this set of pliers and we'll just be adding the bromine into the ampule and sealing it off. From what it looks right here we have exactly uh, 11 milliliters of bromine. That's a decent yield. The 70 grams that we started with should have yielded around 15 mils of bromine so that's not too bad. Anyhow we'll seal it all up and then I'll meet you back. Okay so I've transferred all the bromine into, well it was put into ampules and then we had to of course seal the ampules and something so that if they were dropped they hopefully wouldn't break as that would be very unfortunate. Now this uh, one here, there's a couple bubbles and I'm not totally happy with how it turned out but it's decently good. You can clearly see the bromine inside of there and um, this is my element sample because this fits inside of my periodic table um, because I have a spot for each element, so that's my element sample of bromine. And then in here we have the rest of the bromine. Now this is just kind of for storage because I do plan on possibly using this bromine in a future video. I might do an element series on it or so, or an element video on it or something. But you can see inside there there was just this ample here. And there is some um, uh, plastic tubing that's been wrapped around the glass ampule. So that if you were to hit this, hopefully it wouldn't break. And if it did break, it would still not shatter and spray everywhere. At least that's a hope, then you could quickly huck it outside or something. Anyhow, that's a pretty nice sample of bromine there too. Of course, overall we got about 11 mils of bromine, which is a lot of bromine. I mean, yeah, that's a lot of bromine. You could do a lot of reactions with that amount of bromine. It's more than plenty for future reactions, but um, it's not really super useful. So I don't have a whole lot of uses for bromine, other than just doing some cool reactions possibly in the future, such as reacting like aluminum metal with bromine, which is always fun to do. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed, and this is essentially how to make bromine. I would not recommend anyone attempt this, as it is extremely dangerous, and proper safety precautions must be in place. Anyhow, I'll see you guys later. Wait, bye.